Hey beautiful people, it's Mosiko. I don't know what to say, was that Japanese? Was that Italian? I have no idea. But this is part three of the design system series to help you create your very first design system. Now, two quick disclaimers, like every other video. First, if you haven't watched part one, please watch part one. Like that is probably the most important video that you need to watch out of all five. It helps you understand the atomic design framework. Now, second thing is, if you do want access to this design system that I've created, and you also get a lifetime of updates, which we are constantly adding more components, and also making sure everything is highly componentized, then check the link in the description because I've also left you a juicy, 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 very juicy coupon to get 10 bucks off. So, without further ado, let's dive in. Wah! So, like I said, guys, if you haven't watched part one, please watch part one first, guys, because I'm teaching you how to fish so then you can go fishing and catch as many fishes as you want. I'm not gonna tell you exactly what to do because then you're not gonna be able to survive, you know? All right guys, so let's get into it. Now, like I said, I'm not going to go ahead and tell you and instruct you guys on how to create the sizing for the type because I've already made a video, smash that link above. But I'm gonna walk you guys through how to turn this into a type style that you can utilize in all your designs. So obviously, I'm gonna go ahead and hit F on my keyboard put a frame down. Now, before we get started, the most important thing is for you to plan ahead, right? So in every part of this series, I want you guys to think about like, what do, what are we actually creating in this design system? Because when you're creating a design system, it's very easy for you to go in and just start designing and just try to think about, oh, componentizing things on the fly. And that is gonna trip you up moving forward. A design system is about being consistency, right? Throughout your design process. So to be consistent, you're going to need to plan a little bit before you actually design. You need to think ahead of what do I actually need for this design system. So if I walk you guys through what I've got in our design system over here is that we've got two levels of display fonts, right? Our type. So this is normally used for headings on marketing websites. So if you go to a marketing website, for example, I've just got, uh, I don't have anything open right now, but if you go to a marketing website like I don't know, even like Mizco.net, the big heading that you see at the top generally will be a little bit larger than what a H1 would normally be because you wanna just go bang, this is like what we wanna say and you wanna make it a lot bigger. So instead of breaking the type out of your H1 and then just manually configuring it like this and just saying, oh, I just want this to be a little bit bigger, well, you should plan ahead, like I said, and create display um, type. So you don't need to do that. So if I ever needed a big heading, then I can actually go ahead and just go, I want to display, right? I don't, it's a little, I want it a little bit bigger than the H1, but I don't want it to do it manually. So put your displays in. Then you also have your headings, right? I've got H1 to H5. We also have a subheading. This is something that I use a lot. And I think a lot of uh, designers might actually miss out on this. So whenever you have a heading, right? You, all, you generally will have a little, a little bit of text underneath it, like a subheading. And I really do hate having to use a paragraph, break it out from the type style, and then having to increase the font size. So if I normally have a, let's say a H2 uh, on a page, and then I put a subheading underneath, then I just solved that issue, right? I don't need to think about, oh, breaking something out from a paragraph text and then make, making it two points larger to make a subheading, right? I just want to include that. So that's something I always include as well. Then I also have three levels of paragraph text. This is because with paragraph, that will normally help me solve issues for body content. So just like normal, like text content on a web page. Then sometimes I like to have a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger because you know, like designing UI like interfaces, you need a lot of control. Similar to when we were talking about different uh, shades of gray in UI design, the more control you have, the, the better. And then you won't have to create all these inconsistent styles within your UI design. Then I also have captions and footers. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and create the H1s to H6 and then also the paragraph text. So we're gonna go H heading one. Pop it all out. All right, so imagine that these were all the type styles that we wanted in our design system. And like I said, feel free to add more. You might even wanna reduce it. Probably wouldn't reduce this, but you can add more type styles if you want. Do whatever you want, right? So head over to your type styles, hit the little icon and hit plus. Now, similar to adding colors to your design system, you use the, sl the forward slash to sort of create categorization and nesting of elements. 
So what we want to call this, let's say it's going to be a heading one. I'm going to append dash one to this because as you can see over here, I already have a heading for this existing design system and don't want to replace it. So that would be heading one, right? And it's going to be a H1 because it's a heading one. And then it's going to be regular, right? And I want to walk you through why I appended regular to that as well. And then I'm going to just quickly do this for uh, the H2. So heading one. Uh, oh, this might confuse you guys, but I named heading dash one because I'm just appending dash one because I already have heading in my design system. I wasn't calling it heading one because it was a H1, right? And then I'm gonna call it regular, right? You can see that what I'm doing here is gonna be very consistent and I'll probably just add one more because it's gonna be repetitive, regular, right? So now if I ever wanna add a heading, so the, uh, please gently smash the like button. All right, so imagine that's a heading on a, on a page I'm gonna do. I can select from here the H1, right? And you, you can see it's regular. But sometimes you might realize that with your different headings, you sometimes want it to be a lighter weight and sometimes you want it to be a heavier weight. So you might realize in our topography that we actually have a, uh, a semi-bold, bold, and extra bold version because sometimes this heading, we, we might want a bold, extra bold version of the H2. And you can't actually adjust the bolt, the weight in the textiles over here because you've already defined this as a global style. So you can't break out from it and then change it to extra bold because then you break it out from the, the global type style. So what you have to do is you need to duplicate this element or these group of uh, titles and then replace it with bold and then replace it with extra bold. So let me just walk you guys through exactly how we do that. So we've already got the headings and imagine these ones are already added. Duplicate that, Command D on your keyboard. And then I'm gonna hit this uh, title, break it out from the system, change that to black, for example. And what I'll do is I'm actually gonna go ahead, hit the icon, hit plus, I'm gonna call this heading one, right? And then I'm gonna call this H1, and I'm gonna hit bold, or is it extra bold, just say extra bold. All right, so then now if I go ahead and add, um, please gently smash. The like button i should finish that sentence <laughs> all right cool then we have two different variations of the same h1 so we have a regular and a bold right extra bold so then if you wanted to go ahead and add a in between like a, just a simple bold so it's not extra bold then you can go ahead and detach that change that to bold and then you can go ahead and add that over so you can go heading one and then you can say h1 and bold and then now you'll have three different levels of heading ones. Now, hopefully you understand how to create your very own type scale in your design system. And be sure, be sure in the next video, I'm going to be walking you guys through how you can combine your type scale in your design system with some colors and dynamically, di ooh, magic -y, create some scalable buttons as well. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and be sure if you have questions, make sure to leave them in the comments below. If you appreciate this video, make sure to also leave a comment below because that really does make my day.